She sneezed and broke her back. Sounds impossible, right? But actually it's not. And that's what exactly happened in the case I presented yesterday. Today on World Osteoporosis Day, let's talk about something as small as a sneeze and how it can lead to a fracture and what your bones are trying to tell you before that happens. Our patient was a 72 year old woman, no major trauma, no car accident, no fall. She just sneezed and she felt instant pain in her lower back. And her x-rays showed a classic wedge-shaped compression fracture of her vertebral body. She has osteoporosis and she didn't even know. Here's some facts for you. About one in two women over the age of 50 will break a bone due to osteoporosis at some point in her life. That's one out of every two women. That's half of all women. And just to give you a little bit of context, osteoporosis causes over 8.9 million fractures worldwide each year. That's roughly one fracture every three seconds. And in the U.S. alone, approximately 10 million people have osteoporosis and 80% of them are women. The most common fracture sites are the spine, hip, and wrist, all considered fragility fractures because they occur from minimal trauma, like falling from a standing height or even a sneeze. And it's not just about pain, it's a sign of bone fragility and it's happening silently in millions of people. What exactly is osteoporosis? It literally means porous bone. And as we age, bone formation slows while bone breakdown speeds up. Think of it like a bank account where you're withdrawing more than you deposit. And we hit our peak bone mass, the strongest our bones will ever be in our late 20s and early 30s. And if you put this in context of your bone bank account, everything you eat, lift, and do in your 20s will build your balance. And after that, you're either maintaining or depleting, but you're not adding. When estrogen levels drop after menopause, bone resorption, the breakdown process actually speeds up dramatically. And during this phase, women can lose up to 20% of their bone density in the first five to seven years after menopause. And by 65 years of old, and by age 65, half of all postmenopausal women will have some degree of osteoporosis or osteopenia. A fragility fracture means the bone broke from a minor force, something that normally wouldn't break a healthy bone, like sneezing, bending, or stepping off a curb too hard. The most common sites are the hip, wrist, and your spine. And if you've had one fragility fracture, your risk of another doubles. The spine is the most common place for fragility fractures. Each vertebrae in our body are stacked one on top of the other like a stack of blocks. And if the bone density drops, if that block collapses forward, you create a wedge shaped. And so that's what you see over time when people get shorter or they start to hunch forward as they get older. We call that kyphosis. So how do we diagnose a compression fracture? It usually starts with symptoms like sudden pain in the back, sometimes after a fall or maybe even a sneeze. The first step is an x-ray in which we will see that classic wedge shape where the front part of the vertebral body collapses. And if we need more detail, we can order an MRI and that tells us if the fracture is new or old. And it helps us rule out things like cancer or infection that can also weaken the bones. The whiteness in the bone on the stir images is actually swelling of the bone, which tells us that the fracture is acute. Now the treatment depends on severity. Now most compression fractures heal with conservative treatment like pain control, gentle bracing, and physical therapy to strengthen your core and prevent falls. But if the pain is persistent or the bone collapses further, we can offer a procedure called a vertebroblasty or a kyphoplasty. It's a minimally invasive procedure where we'll actually inject bone cement into the broken bone to stabilize the fracture and sometimes it will restore the height. So think of it like an internal brace. So how do we diagnose osteoporosis? It's not something that you can feel or see, and we love to find it before the fractures happen. The gold standard test is something called a DEXA scan. It's short for dual energy X-ray absorptiometry. Say that three times fast.
The scan is a super low dose x-ray that measures our bone density, usually at the hip and the spine, the two most common sites for osteoporotic fractures. It takes about 10 minutes. There's no needles, no prep, no pain. And so who should actually get one? All women over the age of 65, men over the age of 70, and anyone over 50 who has had a fragility fracture or anyone with risk factors like early menopause, long-term steroid use, smoking, low body weight, or even a family history. The results are given as something called the T-score, and that tells you how your bone density compares to a healthy 30-year-old. A normal T-score is minus one or higher, Osteopenia is anywhere from minus 1 to minus 2.5, and osteoporosis is minus 2.5 or higher. The lower the number, the higher your risk for fractures. Once we know your bone density, we can start treatment, and it's never too late. The goal is to slow bone loss and build bone back. And so maybe you've heard of these medicines like Fosamax, Prolia, or Forteo. But what do they actually do? Your bones are constantly remodeling. It's like a balance between cells that break down your bone called osteoclasts and cells that build new bone called osteoblasts. So when you have osteoporosis, the breakdown side wins. Medicines work by shifting that balance back in your favor. The first group of medicines are anti-resorptives. They slow down bone loss by calming down those overactive osteoclasts. Or bisphosphonates like Fosamax or Reclass. Another medicine called Prolia, which is a twice yearly injection that blocks a key protein called Rankle, which triggers bone breakdown. Now these don't add new bone, but they help preserve the bone that you already have and they may lower your risk of fracture by up to 50%. Then you've got the bone builders. Those are anabolic medications that actually stimulate new bone formation. Those are medicines like Forteo and Timlos. They mimic your body's parathyroid hormone, which wakes up those osteoblasts. And then there's a medicine like Avenity that's a newer dual action drug that both builds bone and slows down bone loss at the same time. And these are usually given for 12 to 24 months and it's followed by one of those anti-resorptive medicines to lock in that new bone formation. Okay, so we cover the medicines, but what are some non-medication things that you can do to help build your bones? Let's go through six different things. Number one, lift heavy things safely. Weight bearing and resistant exercise is the most powerful way that you can stimulate new bone formation. Focus on strength training two to three times a week, especially for your spine, hips, and legs. Even brisk walking, hiking, or dancing counts because bones love impact. Number two is feed your bone. Nutrition matters as much as exercise. So calcium, uh, 1,000 to 1,200 milligrams a day. Vitamin D, 800 to 100 IUs a day. And magnesium, vitamin K2, and protein are underrated bone builders too because pro tip, Bones are 50% protein by volume, so you need to make sure you're consuming enough protein. Number three is hormone balance. Estrogen, testosterone, and thyroid levels all influence our bone turnover. So if you've had early menopause or hormonal disorders, talk to your doctor about checking your levels. Number four is cutting the bone breakers. That means smoking excess caffeine and heavy alcohol because those all weaken your bone and block calcium resorption. Try replacing that with hydration and sleep in your bones. Well, thank you. Fifth is gut health because that is bone health. 70% of calcium and magnesium absorption happens in your gut. So you want to support it with fiber, probiotics, and anti-inflammatory foods like berries, salmon, and leafy greens. Six and the last is mind-body connection. Chronic stress increases your cortisol and cortisol will break down your bone over time. So incorporating stress-reducing rituals like breathing, sunset, and movement that you actually enjoy will help your bones. So let's get back to the patient at the beginning of the video. She never had a DEXA scan done and her score, minus 2.8. She had osteoporosis and she never even knew it. Unfortunately, I see that all the time in my practice. So we treated her with bracing and conservative management and she did well, but if for some reason her pain was persistent or if she did have progressive collapse of her bone, we could have offered her a procedure like a kyphoplasty. 
Here's the scary truth. Once you've had a compression fracture, you're up to five times more likely to have another. And in fact, one in five patients will suffer a second fracture within just a year. We call it the fracture cascade. When one bone weakens the structure, it sets up the stage for the next. And that's why treating underlying osteoporosis is as important as fixing the fracture. If you have a compression fracture and your doctor isn't checking you for osteoporosis, you need to ask. Because every compression fracture is your skeleton's way of saying, help me before the next fracture comes. Osteoporosis is called the silent disease and it's silent in more ways than one. Over 10 million Americans have it, but they don't know it until they break a bone. And even worse, less than one in five people that suffer a fragility fracture ever got tested or treated for the bone loss behind it. We diagnose high cholesterol and high blood pressure early, and we should be doing the same for our bones. Ask for a DEXA scan. Don't wait for your first break for it to be the first clue of your osteoporosis. And I wanna make sure I bring that to your attention on World Osteoporosis Day because it is so, so important in women's health. Another case of patient-focused and compassionate care. Stay tuned next week and I'll go through another case.